Welcome to the Michigan in Focus podcast powered by the Center Square. I'm Bruce Walker, Great Lakes Regional Editor of the Center Square Newswire Service. Michigan in Focus is a production of America's Talking Network. You can find all of the Center Square's great podcasts at americastalking.com. And we ask you to subscribe to Michigan in Focus wherever and whenever you listen to your podcast. We're recording today's podcast on Groundhog Day, Thursday, February 2nd, 2022, and crawling out of his hole to see if he can see his own shadow is the Center Square's own Tom Gantert. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm doing very well. And welcome back, Bruce. It's nice to see you back on the podcast. Kind of like Johnny Carson. You know, I never know if you're going to be in it. John Rivers or are you going to get me? Yeah. Or Jay Leno. So here I am. But thank you. It, 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 it is good to be back. And uh, big news yesterday uh, that relates to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, one George of your Michael. favorite institutions that, uh, you know, one of your, your favorite artists, uh, George Michael, is uh, is one of the nominees to be inducted for this year. And what's my favorite lyric? Uh, something, something, careless whisper no, or something well, cool, like good. that. Guilty feet have got no have rhythm. Ne- no rhythm, which I don't understand why you're so attached to that, but uh, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> you know, go. That's a songwriter right there for you, Bruce, not your Frank Zappa BS. So. Okay. All right. Well, then, you know, and Warren Zevon, but uh, there you go. And Kate Bush is also nominated. So that's, that's kind of, kind of groovy. So listen, um, we're, we got a lot of stuff that uh, you want to talk about today. And um, I'm just going to kind of turn it over to you. Uh, number one, you, we want to talk about how ridiculous it is as journalists to try to get a little bit of government transparency because of the cost of Freedom of Information Act request. Right. I Okay, so I suggested this topic for one reason. I put in a, a Freedom of Information Act to the Michigan Attorney General this week, and I requested uh, salaries of employees for two years, the last two years, 2021-2022. Now, let me preface this by saying in 2009, uh, when I was at the Annaber News, uh, as a reporter, I sat with their then uh, chief financial officer, Tom Crawford, and on a computer, and this was, what, 14 years ago, he showed me how easy it was to get uh, gross pay and salaries for every employee on the computer. Literally, I watched him log in, get the information, and he offered them to in three different fashions. Uh, I could get gross pay. I could get it alphabetically, blah, 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 with the touch of a button. Very simple to do. Not hard at all. It took them less than a minute to get this, to compile this information I wanted. Um, I put a FOIA in for the AG for that information in 2023. And the response was it's going to cost $117.41. So it's not a high price at all. Um, but it's, it's the, what's the word I'm looking for? It's Principle? the spirit of, of right. what we're talking about. Now, Dana Nessel has gone around and talked uh, to newspapers and put on events about transparency. And the Midland News uh, newspaper had the headline, I am a big fan of government transparency. Okay. She's worked with um, the Michigan Press Association uh, and put on forums in this state uh, in terms of how to, um, you know, to, to deal with the Freedom of Information Act. Okay. I will tell you that uh, in, I will say in the last 10 years, I've put in thousands of FOIAs, okay? The only people that charge are the ones that don't want to cooperate. That's it. Uh, This year, I've put in probably close to 200 FOIAs to all sorts of government to try and get uh, just basic financial salary information. Many of them, almost all of them so far, out of 200, have given me that information uh, for free. Okay. The ones that haven't, I just got one rejected from Utah and they rejected it. And the reason they rejected it is they said, this information is already online, available and free. And I went online and it was. A lot of municipalities, this stuff is so often requested, like Los Angeles, San Antonio, 
um, uh, what else? Boston, city of Boston. They put this stuff online for free because it's part of the transparency. Yet in Michigan, an attorney general's office, if you want this information, you got to pay $117. And they're going to ask for the five day, uh, uh, extension because it's going to take them extra time to do it, which is BS too. Um, I don't mind, you know, I, I don't mind the five days. I, there's, there's no pressing need for this information. I, I am upset because, uh, because the $117 is just a big F you to people who are trying to do what they say, what Nestle has said she's in support of, which is government transparency. You know, you can, you support government transparency, but you're one of the handful of government uh, organizations that are going to throw a fee on there. Um, you know, for people to get information that many, many, many municipalities are now putting online for free. Sure. And and that kind of goes along with uh, some of the uh, stories that we've written in the past. Uh, individuals who are submitting FOIAs to school boards and schools to divulge uh, information regarding school curriculum and and what have you. And they come back with, well, you didn't narrow the focus enough and it's going to cost you like $30,000 because we're going to have to hire new staff to come in and fulfill all of the requests that you have. And it's going to take over a year to do so. And um, again, I, I think that's just a, a smoke screen for we just don't want to have to deal with you and we don't want to divulge this information. Sometimes I, I agree with you sometimes. sometimes. And then sometimes somebody doesn't realize the breadth of their of their request. Where it's like I, you know, I, I'm working with a school district that's got you know three thousand five hundred employees, and I want uh, any document email with the word race in it, you know, and you know that could create an issue, you know, in sure. terms well, of well, well, yeah, and and that's the difference between the uh, between a seasoned journalist such as yourself and a concerned parent that. Uh, watched all the president's men and decided that they're going to submit their own FOIA to the school board and they, they've never done it before. So they don't know how to narrow the focus. At, at that stage, the, the organizations that really do care about transparency work with the parents and say, look, this is what you need to do. Right. You know, and then we can, we can work it down. We can work it down from there, which I have seen. Cause like when you say seasoned journalists, it's just hit and miss. It's trial and error. We've all done the same thing where I've, I've made that mistake, get the email back and they work with you. You know, my thing is the $117. It's like, I've been doing this too long. I know what that is. They don't care mm-hmm. about the $117. This is their big F you to, you know, wanting information. <laughs> well, your reputation precedes you, Tom Ganter. I don't think they even know who I am. I don't think that's it. I think it's. Oh, I, I think they do. I yeah, think I, there's a. I think there's it's just, a. I think it's like Richard Nixon's public enemies list. We did do a, a AG on Nestle that. Uh, when I was at my previous job that made Fox news, when she, uh, we put in a, a FOIA in and they, uh, she was in the FOIA saying that she wanted to arrest that woman before she did the Tucker Carlson show, the one in, uh, so maybe they have right. a better memory than I do. I don't know. Right. So. Okay. Well, uh, you're prepared to move on to, yes, I, am now. Uh, I got that off my chest. Oh, I'm, I'm quite okay. Prepared. All thank right. You well, for, thank, thank, thank you for the rant, Tom. I, I do <laughs> appreciate it, sir. You are, uh, the center square's own uh, Dennis Miller in terms of, of rants. So let's talk about toll roads. That's another topic that you, uh, you and I had discussed talking about. Yeah. So I will kick the microphone over to you, sir. I've been in Michigan my whole life. I've lived in states with toll roads. Uh, I do not like toll roads. Okay. Which is it? You've lived in Michigan your entire life, but you've lived in states that have toll roads. Well, that's a good point. All right. I, I lived in New Jersey for, for uh, four years and they have toll roads. Uh, and I lived in uh, Pennsylvania for um, one year. So outside of five years, I've been in Michigan my whole life. The Fair worst enough. feeling in the world is being on the Pennsylvania turnpike and missing your exit and realizing you have to go 28 more miles to turn around. OK, that's happened to me. So, yeah, I hate toll roads. Uh, but that said, I also am not a big fan of my car insurance or my, not my car, my car registration, uh, going up $150 because I bought a new car. So there's a trade off, you know, if, if they did, I, from what I understand, 
So if we did toll roads, we would see a big reduction in uh, vehicle registration and all the other fees they hit you with that have gone up so much. You know, when I had an old car, my vehicle registration was like 80 bucks. Now it's like 156 right around there. I got to pay it again pretty soon. So not a big fan of toll roads. It comes up all the time, uh, not all the time, but every five or six years I see, you know, the idea about toll roads. Uh, I've never had a good experience with toll roads. Um, well, I, I used to commute to work from Michigan to Wyoming, and uh, there were quite a few toll roads depending on which route you took and didn't have much of a problem with them and quite frankly never gave it too much thought what would be some of the arguments in favor of toll roads well it's a user fee the 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 people who are using the roads are paying for them so uh you know so if i decided i never wanted to live the you know the confines of the city of jackson uh, I would uh, save money because I wouldn't be paying such a high, uh, you know, vehicle registration tax um, because everybody would be getting in on the toll roads. I, I, you know, from my own experience, I've also never seen a well-run uh, toll road company uh, that uh, it just seems to me those every time I read about a, a state that has it, uh, the toll road is, agency, for lack of a better word, uh, is in financial uh, peril. So that said. Okay. All right. Plus, I don't well, like the fact that, you know, th there's been plenty of times when I don't got change when I'm driving around, you know what I mean? Or it wouldn't be change anymore or, you know, dollar bills. Well, there, there would be definitely a ramp up period for behavioral change that uh, drivers would keep the appropriate change in their vehicle. And, but I, I also know that uh, sometimes uh, you just receive a bill yeah. uh, where they take a picture of your license plate. Boom, you, know you get a bill. Started? I go to Nashville. Uh, you cross mm -hmm. a bridge when you, uh, and they hit you on the bridge. And I just got, I've been doing that for years. I just got my first, uh, that I realized I forgot my first bill for crossing that bridge. And I didn't even know he did it. They just took a picture and, which, which seems like there should be some problems in that, you know, in terms of, you know, Privacy I might own issues. the car, but, you know. Right, right. And and sometimes it's a rental car, but uh, then you're passing on your personal information. But uh, one of our coworkers, uh, Derek Draplin, who lives out in the Denver area, uh, going out to visit him, I got a surprise bill for that. And I'm like, okay. So aside from the fact that you personally are not a fan of toll roads, what would you perceive to be one of the biggest arguments against them, especially for Michigan? Michigan is kind of an outlier in Midwest states that don't have toll roads. All right. Just off the top of my head, uh, you'd have to set up a government agency to, to run these. And does any of us have confidence that another government agency would, would be an efficient way to do something in Michigan? Okay. Well, uh, and uh, try to get both sides of the story here. So th is there a free market argument in favor or against? I think there is the one tones? for both. You know, like I said, the user fee for uh, where you are actually the people using it are the ones paying for it is uh, as a powerful, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, um, it's, it's a good argument in defense of toll roads, you know, and I just don't like it personally. So, uh, you know, I'm not saying that it's not a good idea because I think the libertarian angle is, is that that is a good thing. You're charging the people that use it, um, as opposed to, um, you know, people who don't, but I would tell you this. Yeah, it's spreading the pain, right? Be, living in Michigan, as long as I have, I would never use a toll road in Michigan. I would find the back roads. <laughs> To anywhere Fair I'm enough. going. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, well, let's move along. We've we've got about five more minutes to go here, and um, really want to hear your take on the uh, repeal of the read by three law here in Michigan. First, you know, explain to listeners what the read by three law is all about, and how long is it? It's been. What is it all books. about, or what did the law say it was? 
Two different what things. Is the law? Yeah, well, well, there you go. So okay. let's let's, so let's, let's say differentiate the law, the law, between the two. The law reads that if you uh, um, can't read or aren't proficient in certain tests, but it means you can't read by third grade, that you're automatically held back. Okay, which is a lie. That you know, and I'll give you an example. So ProPublica, a news site, a nonprofit news site, in 2020 did a story, and I'm going to read you from it real quick. Uh, and they're talking about the, the law, the third grade law. And it said this, the Michigan legislature had chosen this year of all years to enforce a strict new literacy law. Any third grader who could not read proficiently by me could, could flunk and be held back. And it goes for Benton Harbor, a small majority black city halfway between Chicago and Detroit. The implications were immense. And it's like, no, they weren't. We checked with the Benton Harbor School District in 2021. And they told us they did not hold back a single third grader due to the law, right? Then I went and checked it with the city of Detroit. They said the same thing in 2021 because there are so many loopholes and so many opt-outs here that if a school district does not want this to implement this law, they never had to. And, you know, we looked at Detroit and Benton Harbor, which were two of the schools that struggled with, with reading for third graders because they would have, you know, be the most impact by it. And they didn't. They didn't hold back one student. So I'm going to read you a response I got from uh, Crystal Wilson, who is the Detroit, um, the spokesman for Detroit Public Schools. When I asked her November 17th, 2022, if Detroit had held only back students this year, this past year. And Crystal's really good. So I'm going to read you what she said. Uh, DPSCD, which is what they call Detroit Public Schools now, has implemented the law with fidelity to ensure that both parents and teachers are empowered by the existing law to veto the retention of a third grader based on test scores alone. If the parent and teacher disagree, then we rely on the principal's recommendation and the district reviews all data points regarding the student's performance. Typically, we side with the parent's decision to retain or not. We have not experienced challenge from parents regarding our process to matter since the law was implemented. So what she's saying is Detroit's never held back a kid. So my point is, what's all the hoopla about? If, if it's a toothless law that's not being enforced because it's, it was it was so weak that it had so many opt outs and loopholes, then get rid of it. Who cares? No one was no one was following it anyways. It was just this boogeyman that the media use to to make the legislature look bad. And it was the GOP that passed it, and they didn't have the common sense to understand that uh, if you pass a law, at least make it do what it's supposed to do, or you're going to get hit and attacked by the media like ProPublica did for something you're not even doing. Yeah. Well, yeah. Give give the law some teeth. And uh, from what you tell me, that is just not the case. So do you have anything else that uh, you want to cover this week? I, we might have a couple no, of extra minutes. or we can my chest, Bruce. I'm feeling much better. So. Well, I'm, I'm glad, and um, I will send you my bill here very, very shortly, <laughs> sir. So w- thank you, Tom Gantert, our editor-at-large, our managing editor here at the Center Square, and you can find all of his wonderful journalism efforts, well, some of his wonderful journalism efforts, because a lot of, uh, many more of them are done behind the scenes, but uh, you can find his journalistic efforts at thecentersquare.com, various states, sometimes at the national level. And Michigan in Focus is powered by The Center Square. It's a production of America's Talking Network, and you can find all of The Center Square's great, great podcasts at americastalking.com. And if you enjoy this podcast, we ask you to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. I'm Bruce Walker, Great Lakes Regional Editor of the Center Square Newswire Service. Listen for another episode of Michigan in Focus next week.